Hey, Gavin, thanks for taking the time to chat with us as we now enter the 2020 offseason. I want to start this talk uh, by looking big picture from your view, from your chair as the president of soccer, the general manager. Uh, how do you view, how do you evaluate the 2020 season? Thanks, Jake. Uh, good question. I, I think there's a bit of taste in our mouths uh, just purely from the, the last game against Dallas. Uh, that's a game, in all honesty, if you watch it from start to finish again, we gave it away and uh, not always, uh, you know, the best team wins it in football, especially getting knocked out in PKs. It hurts, but I, I think it's also uh, an honest reflection. We need to get better. The uh, same issues haunted us for, for most of the year, and that's not uh, for a lack of trying from, from the coaching staff and everyone involved. I, I think when you look back on 2020, what we're probably most proud of is the, the strength of the club, the culture within the club, how we've shown to, to be not only extremely professional, but also how we've brought together a good group of staff and a good group of players. And I think MLS's back was a, a great indication of that. But in, in 2020, with the challenges that we faced with, with the, the adversity, I think we came through it in many ways with flying colors. And while the season didn't end the way we wanted it to, I think overall it, it, it's a positive, I, I think. Points per game was a positive. Uh, the, the, the MLS's back tournament was a major positive. A lot of the performances at home were, were very positive. And after we uh, came back from the tournament, we had a rough start. But I think we corrected things. And I, I think the, the quality of the group from start to finish it with the players that we have it is very, very competitive. You mentioned the MLS's back tournament winning what is a unique event, quite literally, an event that probably, hopefully, will never happen again. How much pride do you take uh, how much pride does the club take internally for being able to succeed in, in an environment that nobody has ever seen before? Yeah, I think in hindsight, extremely proud. Yeah. Absolutely uh, love the work that Gio and, and the rest of the staff did, and not just the assistant coaches, but everybody from the, the head of performance, Nick Malonis, John McGregor, Matt Weston, all the assistant athletic trainers, uh, Sam Uni, the, the group that traveled was, was unbelievable. And uh, the support group in Portland from the business side and the rest of the soccer side was also very, very impressive. But I think it's easy to dismiss it now, but the challenges that we faced then being gone for 40 plus days and with the adversity that we faced on the road, with the number of games, with the turnaround time, with the conditions, I think it's easy to look at it and just say, oh, you know what? It's the MLS's back tournament. It doesn't mean a lot. But I think if you speak to anybody that, that was there and anybody that was involved in the tournament, I, I think the general consensus was that it was very competitive. It was very hard. And uh, I think we were the best performing team and uh, very, very proud of the group. And obviously to have uh, Sebastian Blanco um, be named uh, MLS's back player of the tournament was extremely impressive. To lose him after a couple of games back uh, into the regular season was obviously very hurt hurtful for the group and uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting him back. Can you take me through the decisions that you guys had to make this year and how you made them? Yeah, first the, the tough ones, uh, Andreas Flores and, and Chris Duval, we did not take up their options and it, it's really hard to put it into words the, what they meant to the club as well. Understanding that the, Andreas has been with the, the club for many, many years as in, and has been with Gio for many years and he carries himself extremely well. He, he's loved by all the players in the club and the locker room. And ultimately, the roster decisions aren't easy ones. And when you start to look at how do we go from 2020 and become better in 2021, there are some tough decisions that are needed. Chris Duval, we brought in this season. He came in on trial. He did extremely well. And we got a lot out of Chris. Uh, I think when we start to look forward, I, I think with Pablo Benir in the right back situation, we have more belief in Pablo, and now we're looking for a different type of player. But that's not to take away from how amazing Chris Duval was and how uh, impressive uh, Andres Flores has been through his time with, with Portland. I think take those two decisions aside. We're in uh, contract discussions with uh, Larice Mabiala, and again, very influential player in the club, uh, very res very much a respected player, and, and we think he's a quality defender. And while you know, we had some issues that you, it's very, very easy to point at the back line and say, why did this happen or why did that happen? Ultimately, there's 11 players on the field and it, it's the collective group that, uh, plus the staff, plus myself, that, that need to address it. So with, with Mabiala, we're hopeful and excited about bringing him back. And then in the back line, we're looking to add a wide defender. Uh, we've moved some players that um, it, it was to their benefit and, and ultimately... It worked for all parties involved, but those players that we have moved, uh, traded, 
they they were a big part of the decision and they were a request that the players had made. So I, I think we did a very reasonable job in difficult times that, that we all know exist right now in moving a player and keeping that player happy and fulfilling their wishes as well. So while that isn't necessarily beneficial to the club, I think it's the, the right thing to do and it's the it's the right thing uh, for them as a developing player uh, to do. So uh, we are looking to bring in a wide defender, Jake, and uh, we will also look to add a quality young central defender um, that we will invest in. And, and we're, we're down to a very short list and it's a matter of finalizing that right now. And then around the group, we've got some things that we're trying to do. We're trying to extend uh, Christian Paredes' contract. We're trying to extend Eric Williamson's contract. Um, the overall group, you know, I, I think the attacking core is very, very impressive. Uh, Felipe Mora was a player that joined us this year on loan from Pumas and was very good and, you know, did well in such a short time span. And he's a player we'd love to keep in the club, but it's going to be a tall order and uh, we'll see where that goes. But you know, it's an impressive group. We're trying to bring back a group that can keep us very, very competitive in an MLS league play and obviously take one step further in the playoffs or several steps further and then also be very competitive in CONCACAF. So we, we have our work cut out for us. You mentioned, you described a lot of the offseason priorities for you guys. This offseason and filling those priorities is going to be very different for you and, and for Ned Grabovoy and your entire group than it has been in any other offseason because of the pandemic. How do the realities of the world that we're living in right now change uh, what you have to do to accomplish your offseason goals? Uh, Ned and I have just got back from a short trip, actually. So even managing that has been extremely challenging. And Ned takes on uh, a lot of these challenges with travel, etc. And he has a young family. So again, we're balancing what's right for the club and, and what's right for our staff. And Ned has been a, an integral part of a, a lot of the acquisitions in the last two to three years. And with his uh, ability and looking at the club's direction, We've put a larger emphasis, obviously, on the positions that, that I've mentioned, but we're still building, you know, depth charts in other areas. And a lot of that scouting is done online at the moment. You know, luckily enough, he he was entrenched and uh, traveled an awful lot in the, in the last three years. And the, the information that we have on many of the players that we've been tracking is detailed and elaborate. And now it's a matter of making sure that they're, they're in environments or leagues where, where they're playing or hoping that they're in environments where they can play and then following their progress. So a lot of online, a lot of videos, uh, a lot of week to week uh, discussions about how players are doing in the, in these environments. We've touched a lot on the Timbers. Want to talk about the Portland Thorns heading into 2021. How do you assess the roster for the Thorns entering next year? I think going into next year will we'll be one of our strongest rosters, Jake. I, I'm thrilled that we were able to acquire Crystal Dunn. Uh, Natalia was another player that we've been uh, looking at for many, many years and bringing her in will, will be a major benefit to the back line. Now we still have one or two targets. We're seeing if we can acquire. We've got to manage the, the Olympics if they happen next year. But, you know, I, I think now it's a matter of keeping our players fit and healthy. Sophia Smith and Morgan Weaver, some of the acquisitions that we made last year, I think we'll really start to see them flourish. And, and then we've got some mainstays. You've got the Lindsay Horan. You, you've got Becky Sauerbrunn. Kling, you, you've got some very, very important players that uh, we expect to have another very, very good season. And obviously you put Crystal in on top of that and uh, some of the other girls that, that we've got. And we're, we're excited about what the future holds. Well, Gavin, if you're able to get some time to enjoy the holidays and, and take a breather, hope you're able to do that. Uh, and good luck this offseason. Thank you, Jake. Much appreciated.